Content note. Misogyny as seen in the series The Big Bang Theory. I also wanted to mention that there are a few mentions of drunken sexual encounters as seen in the series. They are kind of uncomfortable, so please proceed with caution. Disclaimer. Some clips may be blurred or distorted for copyright purposes. Also, I've activated Super Thanks on my channel, so if you'd like to make a one-time donation to show your support, that would mean a lot. Thank you so much, and now on to the video. Penny, portrayed by Kaylee Cuoco, is part of the main cast of characters on the hit 2007 CBS sitcom The Big Bang Theory, which also happens to be the longest-running multi-camera sitcom in U.S. television history. Simply known as Penny, as the writers gave her no last name, her character is significant in that she, for the first two seasons of the show, was the only lead female cast member amongst her four male co-stars. The subsequent female mainstays, Bernadette Rostenkowski and Amy Farrah Fowler, wouldn't be introduced until season three, with the character of Bernadette premiering in season three, episode five, and Amy appearing in the season's finale. This isn't to say that there weren't other women on the show pre-season three, however. Leslie Winkle and Sheldon and Leonard's moms are recurring characters on the series from the get-go. But Penny in particular was the only female character in the main cast for the show's first two years. And this isn't surprising considering the entire premise of the Big Bang Theory is that a group of socially awkward nerds stumble upon a down-on-their-luck beautiful young girl and try to get with her, and thus hijinks ensue. The hijinks come from the fact that the men again are socially awkward or eccentric, as the creators of the show like to say, and thus they don't know how to interact with women and that's the joke. As a side note, the creators haven't really labeled the characters or have diagnosed them, specifically Sheldon. The antics on the show also revolve around how Penny's small town Nebraska upbringing collides with the boys' world of science and nerddom, and how in the end they help one another see the world in new and different ways. A lot of Penny's function on the show is to teach the boys current pop culture things that aren't on their radar because of their geeky niche interests, and also to help them loosen up. While the boys teach her about the world of physics and engineering, subjects she wouldn't have known about otherwise had they never been neighbors. At one point, she even tells Leonard that he's ruined guys like her jock with the heart of gold ex-boyfriend Zack because she sees how uneducated he is after spending so much time with Leonard and his friends. So that's all well and good, right? Penny and the boys open each other's horizons. What's so wrong with that? And on the surface, there isn't anything wrong with that. Penny is a great character. She's really well written and has a unique personality. She's vulnerable, but also street smart. She's mothering, but doesn't take any BS. And in the end, she's not afraid to stick up for herself or her beliefs. But yet, in the show, she's constantly punished by the writing for these same qualities. In addition, the way the show goes about this dynamic of young, downtrodden, financially unstable woman meets a group of nice guys is kind of messed up. Granted, it is a very messed up premise to begin with, but you'd think that with a character like Penny who's strong-headed but also kind and genuine, it wouldn't be that weird. But because she is such a strong character, she has to constantly be taken down a peg to keep the boys' masculinity intact. So let's get into why the show's dynamic with Penny in particular is so wrong. Firstly, there's the age difference. In the first season, Penny just moved from a small town in Nebraska to Pasadena, California to become an actress and rents an apartment across from Leonard and Sheldon, physicists at Caltech. She's said to have just graduated high school and is in her early 20s, whereas Leonard and his friends are supposed to be in their mid-20s. At one point in season one, Howard tells his mom he's 26. And that's all fine and good in the show, but in real life, Kaylee Cuoco, who plays Penny, was really in her early 20s, 22 to be exact, but Leonard, portrayed by Johnny Galecki, was 32, 10 years her senior. This, of course, isn't anything new in Hollywood, but it just makes their relationship so much creepier to me when you know that the actor playing her love interest is like a decade older than her and is made to ogle at her body, obsess over her, and already starts projecting this future on their hypothetical relationship when her brain isn't even fully developed. I also wanted to mention that Johnny Galecki and Kelly Cuoco did date in real life for a couple of years and then parted ways amicably and are still friends to this day, which I think is really nice. But while I was researching, I also came across how Chuck Lorre, after they broke up, wrote more sex scenes between them and according to Cuoco, it was to F with them um, rather than to try to get them back together. Uh... Coco doesn't have anything against Lori for this, but it does say a lot about him as a writer. As Coco said in one interview, luckily John and I came out of it so brilliantly, talking about the breakup. 
We're closer today than we ever were. But I just remember Chuck Lorre, the genius behind our show. He's the best. He's loyal as ever, too. He's really special. But I remember when we broke up, you know, obviously it was a little sensitive for a minute. But I remember those weeks that Chuck had written these episodes where all of a sudden our characters were like sleeping together every other second. (laughs) When asked by the interviewer if Coco thought this was Lori's way of trying to get them back together, Coco responded, no, he just did it to F with us. And even if they didn't have a huge age gap in real life, there's still a power imbalance in where they are professionally and financially. Leonard in the beginning holds all the cards as he has a steady job in the career field he desires to be in, whereas Penny is stuck in a dead-end job with a lot of credit card debt. It's a clearly very imbalanced relationship, and it's like that on purpose so Leonard can go in and be the nice guy, pay Penny's bills, give her free food, and let her use their Wi-Fi. Not to mention, this keeps Penny financially dependent on Leonard, at least in the beginning of their relationship. Leonard goes as far as to pay Penny's rent to keep her in close quarters with him, because if she moves out, he fears he'll lose her forever. That's how insecure he is about their friendship. In season 8, Penny does eventually get a high-paying job as a pharmaceutical sales rep, and they don't get married until season 9 when she's financially secure, which I think was a really important and good decision the team behind the show made. However, Penny's financial dependency on Leonard during the first seven seasons isn't seen as something that we should feel bad about. In fact, Penny is constantly mocked by Howard, Raj, and Sheldon for using their Wi-Fi, eating their takeout, and because Leonard pays her bills. In Season 4, Episode 2, The Cruciferous Vegetable Amplification, Penny doesn't have enough money to pay Leonard back for dinner, and the boys have a field day with her. Howard, who has to speak for Raj since Raj can't talk in front of women unless he's drunk, points out how Penny doesn't even need to put out to get free stuff. Howard, who continues to speak for Raj, says that if Raj had woman parts, he'd eat for free the rest of his life. Penny retorts back, yeah, but you wouldn't be able to talk to yourself. But in the end, she still doesn't have enough money to pay Leonard back. Leonard, of course, says it's okay, and it's up to you to interpret if it's just because he thinks the nicer he is, the more likely he'll get into her pants, or if it's because he really just wants to help her out and doesn't expect anything in return. However, it's clear, at least to me, that he does want something in return, and that pressure does weigh on Penny's mind, and she does feel bad about not being able to compensate Leonard for his perceived kindness, and it just leads to this very unhealthy relationship dynamic. But what I dislike more about this aspect of the earlier seasons of the show, when they focus on how little money Penny has, is that she's made to feel bad for accepting the generosity of her friends because she's a woman. We're going to get more into this in a subsequent section, but the writers and producers of the show seem to be obsessed with talking about how women are supposedly able to get by on their looks alone, and how unfair that is to men, and how if a woman doesn't put out, then they're a whore, but at the same time, if they put out too much with too many men, men, they're also seen as a whore. Like always, there's no winning. And this leads us to our next point. Penny is constantly slut-shamed throughout the show, while simultaneously being desired by the main male cast. For example, in Season 4, Episode 1, The Robotic Manipulation, Sheldon realizes that Penny's wearing the same clothes she had on the night before, and then he and Amy go on to try to calculate how many sexual partners Penny has had, much to Penny's dismay. Amy then asks Penny, Penny, to your mind, are you a slut? The characters and writers on the show berate Penny's choices as a woman, but also want to get with her because in the end, they only see her as a piece of meat or an object to be had, not as someone with their own complex life. They make Penny out to be a serial dater because she just hasn't found the one yet. After all, like she says, she doesn't usually go for guys like Leonard and tends to have self-destructive tendencies, which is a fine choice for your character. But it's written in a way that Leonard then must be the right guy for her because he's nice, but his motivations for being nice are solely based on getting the hot girl he couldn't get in high school and having her as a status symbol. Even though she's damaged goods, he can fix her. And in the end, Penny does stand up for herself and doesn't want to be fixed, says she doesn't want to go back to community college, etc. And Leonard does end up with Penny on her terms, mostly, though for him, she'll always be the prize he thinks he's entitled to. Another point of the show where Penny is punished for being low on funds and for pursuing her dream and is also slut-shamed, yeah, this one's a triple whammy, is when it gets out that she did a topless scene for a low-budget horror film called Serial Apist. Not only does Howard and the others see the topless scene to Penny's dismay, Serial Apist. (laughs) Howard found it online the day we met you. But the movie actually has a small cult following where people just want to ogle at Penny. 
In Season 10, Episode 6, The Fetal Kick Catalyst, Leonard goes with Penny to a small convention where she's been asked to sign autographs for the aforementioned film. Penny gets most of the attention at first, but then the fans turn their awe towards Leonard, who they can't believe is her husband. Penny makes a joke about how he wore her down, a lampshading joke they make throughout the series, and Leonard soaks in the spotlight, illustrating how for him, like I said earlier, Penny's a trophy he always thought he deserved. And though I'm dunking a lot on Penny and Leonard's relationship, I do think that they make sense together and their relationship doesn't ever seem forced, even though there's a lot of jokes on the show about how Leonard and Penny have nothing to talk about or nothing in common, Stewart actually sums up their relationship pretty well. In Season 7, Episode 18, Stewart says Penny and Leonard are the best couple because I feel like you guys make each other better. Penny brought Leonard out of his shell, and it seems like Leonard makes Penny think more deeply about the world. I don't know, together you two kind of make one awesome person. And in the end, I don't think they settled for one another and do think for the most part their relationship was based on their initial friendship. However, one part that I can't forgive or forget is how Penny was made to be pregnant by the end of the series, even though she repeatedly said throughout the show that she didn't want to have kids. Even when she confides this to her friend, Bernadette, who also was hesitant about having kids, Bernadette judges her for it. In season 12, episode 3, the conversation goes... Hang on, why is it crazy to say I might not want to have kids? Oh, it's not crazy, it's just wrong. You only think you don't want kids, but once you have kids, you'll realize that you did want them. Or, I don't want them, so I won't have them, so back off. Aw, you sound like me just before I became a mom and learned what the meaning of love was. Wow, I cannot believe how condescending you're being. Look, I know it's scary, but you're gonna be a great mom. I know I'd be great, but the point is I don't want to be one. Maybe you wouldn't be great, you kinda got a temper. Obviously, this is supposed to be a funny conversation, but Penny, who rightfully is written to stand up for herself and tell Bernadette to back off, still becomes the butt of the joke because she has a temper. Leonard does want to have kids, but then is okay with Penny's choice. Penny even gets him the Batmobile for the day as a kind of apology gift. However, after this episode in Season 12, Episode 15, The Donation Oscillation, Zach, Penny's ex, asks Leonard to be their sperm donor, and thus Leonard could father an offspring. Leonard declines, but then suggests Sheldon to be the donor, but Amy doesn't allow it. I guess this was supposed to be like a callback to the pilot where Sheldon and Leonard are donating their sperm at a high IQ sperm bank. But anyway, it's clear Penny doesn't want to have kids, and that seems to be settled after episode 15. But then of course in the finale we discover that Penny is pregnant, punished again by the writers and producers for making choices about her body. To make it even worse, they blame the surprise pregnancy on Penny because she went out drinking with Sheldon, came home intoxicated, and attacked Leonard. Leonard says, Excuse me, but if I recall, you're the one who went out drinking with Sheldon, then came home and attacked me. To which Penny replies, Attacked you? I think I said, Do you wanna? Leonard responds, Yeah, I was helpless. From my point of view, it seems as though Leonard forgot, or even worse, intentionally didn't use protection, but it's left vague like many other things on the show in order to try to lack any sort of culpability. And this isn't the first time Penny's body was violated by one of her male friends. In Season 3, Episode 8, when Sheldon is helping Penny out after she falls in the shower, he takes a peek at her body even though he says he won't, because as he puts it, the hero always peeks. How'd you see it? You said he wouldn't look. Sorry, as I told you, the hero always peaks. Not to mention all the times Howard tried to spy on Penny by putting a webcam in a teddy bear and by upskirting her on a live stream in episode 9 season 1, the Cooper Hofstadter polarization. Penny also rightfully punches Howard in season 2 episode 12, the killer robot instability, when he says that she'd be the only doable girl at the dance and how that's actually a compliment. Howard then goes home crying, and Penny's made to apologize, but not before punching Howard again after he tries to kiss her. Penny seemingly gets back at him, twice, but then Howard remarks about how he's halfway to pity sex with Penny, showing that he's learned nothing. Lastly, even Raj took advantage of Penny when she was apparently really drunk. As Penny says to him about the night before, Look honey, I was really drunk and made a huge mistake last night. We never should have slept together. It's what ruins friendships. And then he comes forward and tells her that they didn't have sex in the conventional sense. Well, uh, as your friend, you might want to know that we didn't have sex in the conventional sense. Oh god, did you pull some weird Indian crap on me? No, no, after we got undressed and jumped into bed, you asked if I had protection. Oh, you did, didn't you? Of course, I'm always packing. Anyway, um, I had trouble putting it on, and you tried to help, and that's all she wrote. So we didn't actually... I did. It was beautiful. 
Raj at least came forward to clarify what happened the night before because if he hadn't, Penny would have thought that they actually did have penetrative sex. Penny at the end of the episode is also written to apologize and come forward in front of the group saying, Okay, um, well, I already talked to Raj, but I wanted to apologize to the rest of you for, you know, everything. So she has to apologize for something she didn't even remember happened. Even though Penny and Raj both agree to let this incident stay in the past, Raj still brings it up to Emily, his girlfriend in a later season, and Emily then confronts Penny asking if it's really true that they slept together. Way to keep it between you guys, Raj. Raj, of course, does this because he wants to brag about his conquest, a night that Penny doesn't remember and has to take your word for. As a side note before we go on, a lot of people posted in the comments about how Raj also deserved better from the show, especially since the writers refused to give him a girlfriend even though he was clearly the hopeless romantic of the group who wanted partnership more than any of them. Some say he was also the most genuinely nice male character and he did really change throughout the seasons going from a drunk asshole to someone in touch with their feminine side and proud of it despite his friend's remarks. And he even stands up to Howard after years of being tricked by him in season 11. Howard not only made him think immigrants give presents to non-immigrants on Thanksgiving, he also made Raj wash his family's clothes on the 4th of July. Howard also constantly belittles and mocks Raj while also doing Indian accents and telling racist jokes. And though Raj throughout the show says Howard's being racist, it's never taken seriously. Raj's breakup with Howard lasts from episode 10 to episode 11 of season 11, which is nice to see. And when they make up, things are a bit different between them, but part of the show is the friends constantly dunking on one another, so that's always going to be there. But going back to Penny, let's talk about her as the cool girl. What is a cool girl? Well, in the words of Gillian Flynn's character Amy Dunn, a cool girl is a hot, brilliant, funny woman who adores football, poker, dirty jokes, and burping, who plays video games, drinks cheap beer, loves threesomes, and sex. Cool girls are above all hot, hot and understanding. Cool girls never get angry. They only smile in a chagrined, loving manner and let their men do whatever they want. Go ahead, shit on me. I don't mind. I'm the cool girl. And though I think a lot of people may see Penny as a cool girl, as she does fit into a lot of these early 2000s tropes fueled by internalized misogyny that a lot of female characters and real people played into at the time, as noted by Flynn stating that you're dating a woman who has watched too many movies written by socially awkward men who'd like to believe that this kind of woman exists and might kiss them, Penny doesn't fit this archetype perfectly. She does love sports and beer and is sexually available, hot, and understanding, but she does get angry and doesn't let the men in her life walk all over her. In fact, her being a tomboy and more masculine than Leonard and his friends gets her mocked a lot on the show. And part of the humor in this scenario is that a woman is more manly and physically stronger than actual men, making the geeky men the butt of the joke. But even though the men face a lot of ridicule on the show, Penny, who is seen by all the men as this attractive woman who they want to partner, is also berated for not only being more masculine and having masculine interests, but also for physically looking like a man. For example, Sheldon constantly notes how big Penny's hands are and how broad her shoulders are. She's mocked for having visible muscles. It's this weird paradox how Penny is a cool girl, is hot, is desired, is a guy's guy, but too much. She's too cool in that she threatens the men's masculinity. And the comments the writers feel they need to make about Kaylee Cuoco's body are really irritating. They're essentially shaming Cuoco's actual body because it doesn't fit into the waif-like beauty standard of the era the show was initially written in. In the unaired pilot of The Big Bang Theory, Katie, who would later become Penny, is portrayed by Amanda Walsh, who unlike Cuoco has a very thin and tall model type body. And sometimes I wonder if they would make the same mean jokes about Katie as they make about Penny if they kept Walsh on, and I don't think they would. Though in the unaired pilot, Sheldon does remark about how small her backside is, again showing how women can never be good enough, but should still settle for nice guys. But in all, I think these jokes about how big Penny is are direct comments about Cuoco's own body. And Cuoco herself is proud about her body and fitness lifestyle and good for her because she does look great. And I don't think it was easy having a more muscular body in the early 2000s when the beauty standard was the opposite of that. It must have been really annoying to receive these comments during filming, even if they were just part of the show, because they're not subtle. It's also annoying how clearly the people behind the show wanted to cast a busty woman with curves without knowing that to be curvy you have to have some extra body fat around your arms and legs. Cuoco in the beginning of the series is constantly put in short shorts and low plunging tank tops on purpose and then the writers have the audacity to say she looks manly or that parts of her are too big. Like, come on. 
And to talk a little bit about the unaired pilot, Katie, who was originally a stand-in for Penny, reminds me a lot of Alicia from Season 2, Episode 19, lovingly entitled The Dead Hooker Juxtaposition. Katie and Alicia both use Leonard and their friends because they know they're hot and that the men are desperate. Katie, in the unaired pilot, moves into Leonard and Sheldon's apartment because, as she blatantly puts it, Where else can I live rent-free without having to bang some loser? Alicia in season two says that Penny is doing the same thing that she's doing, using the guys to do her bidding because she knows she can. This makes Penny evaluate her and her friend's relationship because she doesn't see herself as using them because to her, they're friends. They help each other out. Maybe Penny doesn't have much to offer them, but they're willingly coming to her aid emotionally and financially and seem to outwardly like her company. And you can't just blame Penny for this as the men are more than willing again to come to her aid even if it's only in hopes of sleeping with her. And as a side note, the men on the show never have to reevaluate their relationship to Penny and why they're being nice to her. But Penny is forced to evaluate her relationship with them for some reason. It's just really aggravating. Whereas Katie and Alicia only see the boys for their utility, Penny sees them as more than that, but also can't help but think maybe she does owe them. And that puts her in a really awkward position, no matter how much Leonard says she doesn't owe him anything. But the writers make it seem like women are so evil for using men without acknowledging that that's the men's choice and that they're willingly putting themselves out there. There's also this lack of acknowledgement again at how uncomfortable it is to be in a position as a woman financially dependent on a man to make ends meet, especially with a man who clearly wants something in return, but you don't like him that way or want him in that way. That's not only uncomfortable, but extremely dangerous. Thankfully, Penny does carve out a career for herself, but in the first seven seasons of the series, it is really painful to watch how Penny is treated as the mean one for not putting out in order to repay Leonard, as if she owes him something that he did on his own volition. It just annoys me how the men don't get any shit for literally negging women in order to try to get them to sleep with them, but Penny is written as if she owes them things for things that they're not even doing out of the kindness of their hearts. And again, like I said earlier, the men never have to reevaluate their relationship to Penny and why they're being nice to her, but she has to do that in her relationship with them for some reason. Going back to Penny as a cool girl, Penny for the most part is cool in that she's a guy's guy but still hot and feminine and nurturing. This makes the other lead female characters jealous of her. For example, Amy outwardly says to Penny that she wishes she had the kind of relationship Penny has with Sheldon. Penny is seen as a kind of mother figure to Sheldon in that she's loving and takes care of him, but also is stern and strict with him. And he responds well to her authority and respects her, whereas with Amy, he doesn't. There's plenty of episodes where Penny acts like a mom to Sheldon, taking him to Disneyland, taking care of him when he's sick, and even talking to him as if he were a child. Leonard also parents Sheldon a lot as Sheldon is written to be more and more childish as the series progresses, and in the finale, Penny and Leonard even say that Sheldon was their practice kid. Amy also has this sexual infatuation with Penny that borderlines on creepy in that she proposes oddly sexual things to Penny and Penny is clearly not comfortable with that. Originally, we were painted nude, but I had him add clothes because I thought it was an unnecessary challenge to our heterosexuality. They also put Sheldon and Penny into some weirdly sexually charged scenarios in the beginning of the series because I guess it's funny to pit a socially awkward guy with an attractive woman. Bernadette also feels threatened by Penny's coolness in that she's envious of Penny's body and also her decision not to have kids, as Bernadette also didn't want to have kids but had to have them and now wants Penny to be as miserable as she is. Amy is also jealous of Penny's body and in the finale is so happy when they had to take her dress in and let Penny's dress out. And women do get jealous of one another and that's fine to illustrate, but it's just done in such a callous and catty way that the jokes, like most of the jokes on the show, just come off as mean. The cool girl, as Flynn writes, doesn't actually exist, but a lot of women have taken on that persona in order to find a match. But Penny doesn't change for Leonard, and neither does Bernadette or Amy. In fact, the women are written with distinctly different interests than their partners, and I think that was actually a really good inclusion. In the end, I don't think Penny was intended to be a cool girl, as seen with her prototype Katie, who is anything but. But she still ticks a lot of the cool girl boxes, which might make people dismiss her when they shouldn't. And in fact, she's too cool. She's too much of a guy's guy. She's too muscular, too strong, too into sports, too into beer, and thus must be taken down a peg and put back in her place. And thus is the paradox of the cool girl. 
In this video, I've talked a lot about the uncomfortable power imbalance between Penny and Leonard during the majority of the show. And in fact, it's not until season 8 that Penny stops being a waitress and becomes a pharmaceutical sales rep. And it's actually really good at it and makes a substantial amount of money. She finally becomes financially independent, but before this, when asked about how Penny makes it in the world on a waitress's salary, she answers... I'm cute, I get by. Again, the writers love to demonize how women take advantage of men or the patriarchy without actually reflecting on the horrible outcomes of this getting by on your looks economy. Penny being able to rely on men in order to survive is a really dangerous position to be in and not one that is cute or funny, but it's made to look that way because men don't want to be held accountable for the power they wield in these situations. So instead, let's call the women sluts and whores and lazy for not working hard enough or for using their bodies to get what they want because that's a lot worse than me taking advantage of someone years younger than me in a minimum wage job. We should acknowledge, however, that Penny as an attractive white woman clearly does have pretty privilege and uses that to her advantage because that's the only asset she has at the moment and that's kind of sad and sucks, but it's again written as cute and funny. The show does acknowledge how not all women can operate in the world like Penny, like Amy, for example, who doesn't have that privilege and thus has needed to focus on her career to achieve financial independence. And I think it's a good thing to acknowledge how not all women have pretty privilege and how beauty is a commodity with an expiration date and a price tag. However, I still don't like how women like Penny are seen as parasites for just using the system the best way they can. Women knowing that they're hot and desirable to men is seen as a bad thing on the show because it means that they're going to take advantage of you, even though Penny never does this and is taken advantage of by the men way more than she abuses any type of power she may have. Penny also uses her sexual appeal to sell pharmaceuticals, and it works, and good for her. But of course, that's seen as a joke, and again, not a little sad that she has to wake up the girls before going into a sales meeting. In the end, Penny deserves better because she's demonized for simply doing things that benefit her because they emasculate the men around her. She's punished for standing up for herself when Howard makes sexist remarks. She's made to apologize to her group of friends after Raj sleeps with her when she's blacked out. She's mocked by Sheldon for having too many sexual partners and is made to feel guilty for relying on her so-called friends for financial help because she should at least be putting out. Even her own physicality is mocked by the writers for appearing too mannish and muscular, for being too physically strong, while at the same time being too pretty. But even her beauty is demonized because then she's able to trick the system and get free stuff and do better at her job to improve her financial situation, god forbid. And of course, let's give the character who doesn't want to have kids a baby in the finale to hammer in the final nail in the coffin. Penny's character, though again well written and entertaining, is constantly shit upon by the writers, and I'm just so perplexed as to why, but I guess in the end it's not that hard to parse out, it's just your simple everyday misogyny. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment and give it a like and share it. I had a lot of fun making it. I've had this topic on my mind for a really long time. So again, I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.